welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the Grab and Go purse, Grab and Go clutch by KM Designs. Uh, this bag is actually designed to pair with the Hullabaloo Hobo bag. So it's got instructions on how to have this like magnetized to the inside of the bag, which is really cool. Uh, so I have just chosen to do the non-boxed corner uh, bottom. It's just a nice little slip clutch. So if you would like to see how I did this one, please stay tuned. So it was really hard to pick which version I wanted to do, but I decided to do the triple one, as you saw at the start, just for something different. So what I've actually done is I've cut two of each pieces, which makes it easy, and then I can just come along and join the opposite colours. So I'm going to line it up at the bottom, because we want the bottom to be nice and straight. And then probably turn everything, it might help. And then I'm going to backstitch at the start. And then I'm going to chain stitch. So I'm going to grab the middle one like this and do the same thing. So chain stitching is really good because it saves threads and cutting and it's just quicker. So I do a lot of chain stitching uh, when I'm off camera. So then you can just cut the first one off. And then come back to the next one. So I'm not going to top stitch until the end. And then that way all my top stitching will be the same length. And I don't have to switch the machine over as often. Which again makes it a little bit quicker. Not that this is a long project. But just in general. So I'm going to make sure the bottom's lined up. If my curve is a little bit wrong at the top. I can just kind of curve that straight. Um... And also the bottom's easier to line up because it's straight. Okay, so now we've got these pieces. I'm going to crank up my stitch length to uh, three and three quarters. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can either stitch on the vinyl in the centre or you can stitch on the outside or you can do both. I'm going to do both because I think it's going to look cool. Um, but you don't have to. You do need to stitch it one way to stitch down and make it more flat. So I'm going to chop this one off. And then while I'm on this side, I'm just going to pivot and go down the other side. So I'm using the seam as my guide. And I'm running my foot down the center of the seam so that I get a 1 8 or approximately 1 8 seam allowance on each side. And then I'm going to do the same to this one. I'm also back stitching at the end of each because I do like to lock in my stitches. Then I'm going to lift it up and down into the other side. This would also look really cool if I had like a completely contrasting thread, like a gold. Gold would be pretty. Or a slightly darker teal would look nice as well. Ah, see? Forgot to chain stitch. Now I'm just going to have more tails. It's not a big deal. But I've been recently looking at how much thread I throw away, and it feels very wasteful. Beautiful. So now I've got those pieces done. I can just pop those aside. Now I'm going to come do the next easy part. So I'm going to do my pocket. So I didn't cut two pocket pieces. I just joined them together to make one really long one because that's what I like to do. I find it easier. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then I'm going to grab my Chaco pen because I'm working on black and I need to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to measure half an inch down from the top and three quarters of an inch in from each side and then rule a line between those points. And then I go three-eighths of an inch down 
and do another line. Now it will that um, rectangle will be a different size depending on what size zipper you're using. So I'm using a size five, uh, but if you use smaller, you might want to consider making a smaller box. Uh, and if you are by chance using a bigger zip, make a bigger box. Although a bigger zip on this would be, you know, really big. So I'm just going to center it. So the way I'm currently centering it is I'm looking at the bottom to make sure this is straight and there's about an even stretch along the bottom. The other way you could do it is fold it in half and fold this in half and line the joins up. Um, but my eyes have gotten really good at finding the center of things. So I'm going to stitch. I always back stitch at the start and then stitch all the way to the corner of that pocket. Now I usually hand crank the last one to make sure it's directly in that corner. And then turn and go again like so. Chop your tails as you go and put them in the bin so that you have less mess later. Less cleaning means more sewing, especially in this house. So I've just chopped in the center of the rectangle we just sewed. And now I'm chopping down the center till I get about half an inch from the end. And then I'm gonna do what's called, or what I call triangling out the corners. So we're just gonna make a cute little triangle. We're gonna do that in both corners. What this does is it helps you to get a really crisp, flat turn. So when we turn the pocket through, all right, take your pocket and push it through the hole. And because we've triangled those corners, you should get really crisp corners once it's turned through. Now you want to try and clip as close to your stitches as you can, but without actually cutting through your stitches. If you do accidentally cut through your stitches, before you turn it through, just sew that corner again, making sure that you back stitch, um, and then that'll solve your problem. So I'm just finger pressing this. You could also most definitely iron it. Then we're going to grab some zipper tape. So I'm just going to measure mine out. And I've got my zipper scissors here. Uh, if you've never watched one of my videos before, you'll notice I have a lot of different scissors. They all do different stuff. <laughs> Which is important. So I'm just going to use my zipper jig to pop that on. So hubby got back yesterday afternoon. So sometime in the near future, I will convince him to do the video on how to make the zipper jig. I'll follow him around with a camera like a weirdo. It'll be fantastic. All right, so I'm just gonna place my pocket over the zipper. And I wanna make sure that the zipper is going to come out both ends. So I want it, I cut my zipper the width of the pocket. So when we're top stitching and when we stitch the sides closed, you'll encapsulate the edge of the zipper, which means we don't have to go and put a stopper on it. Needle down and then pivot and then line up the fabric and stitch along the edge. Now when I get close to the zipper pull, I'm going to leave my needle down, zip it in the opposite direction to the way I'm sewing. Oh, one more stitch. Wasn't quite wide enough then. And again, I'm back at the zipper pull, so I'm going to zip that up and then finish it off with a back stitch once we get back to the starting stitches. And again, we want to trim off our tails and put them in the bin. The main reason I'm saying that out loud is so I don't throw them on the floor because I do that a lot, which is why I have to vacuum so often. I just unthreaded that, that was unwise. Okay, so now to stitch the pocket shut, we're just gonna do the two sides because I'm actually gonna turn the bag out through this hole. So I'm gonna line up the bottom again, back stitch because we always backstitch. 
There's only very few occasions where I don't backstitch. And instead, it's a circle and I overlap the first stitches. All right, so I'm going to unzip this now so I don't forget later so that I can definitely get in. And then we're going to take all of the pocket pieces. Now, the pattern says you use cork, but I'm using vinyl and it will work just as well. Basically, you need a non-fraying fabric. Um, so my first thing I'm going to do is put these right sides together so that it's going to look pretty on both sides and just top stitch this curve. Now I'm going to start one stitch in. I'm going to do one back stitch and then come forward. And if you're not confident in holding these together, by all means use some double sided tape so that they don't move while we're stitching them. There we go. Now, if you want to, you can top stitch the other pockets uh, as a nice accent. I've just got my back thread all tangled, so I'm just going to pull that out. I'm just going to use like one point of my snips, so because I can get under the loop and under the loop. Sorry, not the loop, and lift it. And then I'm just going to melt those ends. So I always use the blue part of the flame when I'm melting ends so that it doesn't uh, damage it in any way. So now we just want to layer these up. And again, if I was using a blue or green stitching, so basically I could pull any color out of here. So you could use purple, green, blue, or gold. If I was using those colors to do my stitching, a nice accent uh, 1 8 of an inch from the edge would be amazing. Then I'm just going to line all those up and grab some wonder clips and I just put them so you can't see what I'm doing. That was not smart. So I just want to line them all up at the edge. You may need more than one clip to do this unless you've got really wide clips. Now I can see here that I have cut my pocket a little bit wrong. So this one's just like a smidgen too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a half a smidgen off each side so that it's still even, like so. Yes, that's better. Okay, so the other thing we want to do is I'm going to flip this over so that you can see from the back and we're just going to tack stitch along here. So we won't see these stitches, but this is going to stop the card falling out. So I'm going to stitch there. Like that. And then this one lines up here. So I'm going to do that one as well. So this might look really, really weird, but just trust me on this. Oh, I didn't line that up properly there. Well, that's not ideal. And we can take this one and stick it on top and pin it. Like that. And then I'm going to grab my panel, put all my scissors away, and center this up. And then I'm just going to stitch down across the bottom and up the side. I'm using one eighth of an inch of a seam allowance. Nope, need one more stitch that way. There we go. Now, 
we are up to the top zip. So I've got two little zipper tabs. I'm going to do a zipper tab option. Uh, it also, if you wanted to, you could have the uh, zipper trail off the end, which would be similar to how I do it in the Lynette business bag. Grab my zipper tape. Measure how long I want it. So I want to come in about there. And so there. So that's how long I want my zipper tape. The pattern does tell you how long you need it. Uh, but I didn't bring the pattern with me. And then again, I'm going to put my zipper on now so that I actually have a zipper pull. And then feed it down. Make sure it's even. Beautiful. So now I'm going to take my two tabs. Now I have made my tabs one and a quarter squares uh, because that is the width of my zipper tape. So you can choose to make yours longer if you want to. I possibly wouldn't go much shorter or they're very, very difficult to stitch. But these are just going to be cute little zipper ends. And if you've done different colored vinyls on your front panel, so if you chose two different vinyls, you could do either matching or opposing ends, which would both look very cute. What else would be adorable is if you splice this into more than three panels. So if you did six, you could do like a rainbow. That would be fun. I might just do that in a video yet, because that would be fun. All right, so now they're on. I'm at my three and three quarter seam allowance. Stitch length, sorry, not seam allowance, stitch length. And I'm just going to top stitch those zips down. And I turned my machine off. I don't know why I did that. And then I'm just going to bring this one around and chain stitch it. Because again, I don't like to waste a lot of thread. And if I had to pull that out to do it, I possibly would have wasted more thread than I would have stitched. Okay, so there is my zip. So I'm going to take... A, actually, I'm going to take the pocket with my zip because I want to make sure that my zips are going to go the same way. So then I'm going to pin this with my Wonder Clips across so it sits in the middle. So it doesn't want to go all the way to the edge. We do have a bit of a gap uh, because that's how I've chosen to do it. If you don't want a gap, just make your zipper longer and then you can stitch your zip into the seams at the side. Um... Yeah, personal choice. I just felt like doing it this way. I'm not actually sure what the pattern says. I just really like the shape of this bag. Okay, so I want my zipper pocket on the back wall. So if I had a front versus back, because what you could do as well, just as another option, is do like a fun front and then a solid back. Um, of either the fabric or all vinyl, depending on what you wanted to do. If you wanted to make this squishier, you could also put some fusible fleece on the back and that would give it more body. That would be lovely as well. Uh, if you did waterproof lining, this could be like a great little makeup or uh, toiletry bag for in your um, handbag. So at the moment, I've currently got a Devon by Sotac and that has got all my medicines in it. So, like, when I say all my medicines, my asthma medication and, you know, Panadol, Nurofen, tampons, girly stuff, all that jazz. Okay, so I've just added it into my clips. Now I'm going to go back to a joining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. Yours may be more or less, depending on your machine. And then I'm just going to top stitch. Now, here is my zipper pull. So I'm going to go past where I've zipped so it's out of the way because if I try and zip, uh, stitch past it, it makes like a little bubble, which I don't like. Now I'm going to put my clips away even though I know I need them again. So I'm back up to three and three quarter stitch and I'm just going to take my top piece and I'm going to top stitch. Now this won't sit flat because we've sewn a curve, so I'm just going to do it in sections. So 
I am going to backstitch because I'll always backstitch. Unless I forget, but that's bad usually. And then I'm just going to stitch along the top. So I'm just uh, finger pressing it as I go, keeping in mind that the joining seams of the front panel is usually a little bit higher. So there is one side done. And then we're going to do the same to our back piece. So the easiest way to line this up is actually to line this fabric up with the piece we just stitched down. And then take some wonder clips and clip along. As many or as few as you like. I always put more on a curve than if it was straight. If it was straight, this would probably get four, if any. Um, but because it's a curve, I want everything to stay where I put it. that into the um, clips. I always find it easier to do one and then just add the third one in. The other option is you could baste it all together. So you could baste the zip onto the lining and then I probably wouldn't need to clip. But it's time versus money. We're back to that. So if you were to baste it, you'd be using more thread, but you would save time. Alright, so I'm at my zipper pull, so I'm just going to put it over there at the way. And then backstitch at the end. Back up to three and three quarters. Fold over just the one. And then top stitch, making sure we backstitch. And I'm just finger pressing that little nub there where the seams join on the front panel. Uh, if you find that it's a bit too thick for your machine, if you've got these handy dandy pliers, you could just give it a bit of a squeeze and that will flatten it out. So these are flat on the inside for anybody that hasn't seen them. So there's no teeth or anything in there. So they're leather tool pliers designed to literally squish things. That's why they exist and they are wonderful and I use them quite a lot. Especially with bigger bags. So for those of you that have tried to make Nora by Swoon and you really struggle, get yourself some of them. They will help. Alright, so now we're just up to the joining. So I'm going to take my two outside pieces first and I'm going to line up those seams. Because in a perfect world, you've done beautiful sewing and they'll line up. And if they don't, I mean, I don't know. Make them line up. Oh, look at that. Mine doesn't line up. So that tells me that I stretched the vinyl when I put the top stitch on. But that's fine. We just add more pins and that will flatten itself out, I promise. Okay, so then we're going to come to the side and we want to bend our little zipper tab in half just so it's out of the way and flatter so we can sew past it. So I'm going to put a clip there and then if you want to you can stick some down the side. And then I'm going to line up this bottom corner of the lining and make sure that that's lined up. Another one in the middle. Now we're going to leave, oh no we don't need to leave a gap because we've left our pocket and it's nearly the size of the bag. Now obviously as you can see I didn't choose the boxing of the bottom. That wasn't so much a deliberate thing as my um, laminator ate my pattern. It was not great and it wrecked the box part on two of the pieces. And I'm on a little bit of a time crunch at the moment. So instead of reprinting it now, I thought I'd just get a video done for you guys. So we're doing just the little slip bag. But it's still big enough to fit enough stuff. 
Um, and the pattern as well, actually, while well, I think about it, I'll tell you about it. The pattern comes with an option to stick some magnets on. So this idea, the idea of the grab and go bag is it pairs with the hullabaloo hobo bag that I did. So you can put two magnets in the bag and then you can just magnet this to the side and have all your essentials. So if you're just ducking into a shop, you just unmagnet this and take it with you because it's got all your cards and everything in it. I really like that idea. I will do a video on it, I promise. There's actually a couple of things I like from the Hullabaloo Hobo bag. I'm gonna steal and stick it in other bags. So if you haven't seen the video yet, go look it up. It's pretty cool. Alright, so I'm just taking my clips off, stitching around the edge. When I get to the corner, I make sure that I'm in the corner properly. Needle down, pivot. And I put the problem end face down. So theoretically that is now still lined up. And all those little lumps I had before aren't there. See, there's no, there's no bumps or anything in my stitches. Vinyl is quite forgiving when it comes to stuff like that. I'm about to run out of bobbin thread because I can hear it. My machine turns really tinny. take these ones. These are my zipper scissors so I don't know how sharp they are and I'm just going to chop on an angle out from the point of the corner like that and the reason we do that is because it's going to give me a nicer point when I turn the bag in the right way. These are a bit blunt because they cut a lot of zips so forgive me if it takes a little bit longer. But yeah, so I don't cut it on a 45 degree angle because I find that that won't sit as nicely. I always cut it a little bit more. Throw all that in the bin. Head to your pocket. And then I'm going to grab a corner. I'm going to poke it in so that I can grab it like a puppet. My bag can talk. And then pull that through. So now I'm just going to grab my flute cleaner. Again, if you've never watched my videos, I love this thing. It pushes out corners really, really well. So I'm just going to stick it in the bag and push the corner. Lots of people use chopsticks. I am not a fan of the chopstick. It's too pointy and I have pushed many a chopstick through a seam. So I don't do that anymore. Now the idea is with the way that I've done the zip is you want it to sew really, really close to the tab, but not over it. So I technically have like a tiny, tiny hole, uh, but it's not even big enough that I can get that through. So it's not like things can fall out of it. If something fell through that, I would genuinely be surprised. You'd have to force like a necklace through it. And it'd have to be a very thin necklace if you wanted something to actually get through. So I'm just using this and pushing it against the seam to make it pop out really well. Like so. Then I can push the lining into the bag. So I'm pushing it all the way down. And then I'm going to pull out the zipper pocket piece. Chop that thread off so it doesn't annoy me. Alright, so now all I have to do is close up the zipper pocket. So I'm going to take my fingers and just push down, maybe, maybe not. I push down approximately one knuckle's worth, which I guess is about half an inch. I've never measured my knuckle. Oh. That says an inch, but I definitely haven't turned under an inch. So I'm guessing approximately half an inch. Either way, and then I'm just going to finger press it to give it a bit of a crease. And then I'm just going to sew it shut with a two and a half seam uh, stitch length. So I'm going to start at the corner and back stitch. But I'm going to stop there 
and grab one of my tags, which is in my purple skull, with my soothers, because I talk so much I get a sore throat. And then I'm just going to pop one of those into that seam, and as I'm stitching it shut, I'm also going to have my tag in there. Like that. Pull that out. Chop off my tails. Push the zipper pocket in. Again, you might want to get this and push the corners so that it sits nice and flat and flush. If it's not flat, it might bulk this out a little bit. There you go. The grab and go flat bag. I really like how I've done that. That come out really cute. Um, if you're going to make one, please join my group and come and show me the cool ways that you decided to do this. Uh, this is obviously just one of like a hundred different ways you can sew it. Um, it's also got, the pattern's also got like a, an angled part. So you can have like a front slip pocket. It's got an accent panel if you wanted to do like a main fabric. So it's got lots of really cool ways to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you for the next one. Bye guys.